All right, we got a uh, star fields giving us warnings or something before you buy. Let's check it out. Hello, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy. That show would give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. All right, it's me, all right. Jake Baldino, and hey, all right, Jake Starfield. Hey, Baldino. The tackle. It's a game that's been in the works for many, many years. From yeah. Game development studio. It's been delayed. Love, and some people have been turned off. Heavily delayed. Years. It's a completely new thing for them. It's not an Elder Scrolls or a Fallout sequel. It's an ambitious space exploration game with its own new worlds and lore. So after playing a review copy and spending many hours with this game, personal opinion up from here, I like Starfield. Okay, so you haven't beaten the game. You had a review copy, many hours, that tells me like the first first chapter, the first level, the first uh, act of the three acts in the series of the gameplay. Let, tell me you didn't get too far. I don't know if I love it. It has a lot of flaws, and in right. some places doesn't quite hit the heights I was hoping it would, but real simple. All right, you just said that this is a completely new IP, a completely new property. So what expectations would you have? How could you set a height of expectation for something completely new? Are you just buying into trailers and that built up hype train and then you feed on that hype and you get unrealistic expectations? I mean, I don't know where anyone can get expectations for this game if it's completely new IP. It's like you should have zero expectations. You've never played it before. You don't know any of its predecessors, you don't know the mechanics, you don't know the gameplay, you just have zero blank slate expectations. It's kind of a weird comment. Simply put, I've enjoyed my time in this game world. If you were hoping Bethesda would make an epic game that would feel nothing like what they've done in the past and be completely glitch-free and no. change the world, no. well, then no. you might be a bit disappointed. No one had that expectation. If you're the type of player that was <laughs> just looking for the next Skyrim, the next Fallout, and just like embracing the Bethesda gameplay and vibe like that's realistic. Like it, then I think you'll be satisfied. Okay. Starfield is a complicated one. That that's a realistic expl uh, expectation people would have, that it's just another clone of uh, the Scroll series, but with a star space aesthetic. I mean, that's, that's realistic. Just a clone. Same style gameplay, some glitches and bugs, you know. Maybe the storytelling is as generic and uneventful as those games are. Yeah, I have an expectation to talk about, and I do think everyone's going to argue about it. It's going to be a divisive one. On the surface, it doesn't look very nice, it has weird NPCs, it does have bugs, and the space... Okay, weird NPCs are just a Bethesda hallmark. That's, like, not needed to be explained, or that's just a default given at this point. <laughs> Generic NPCs. I'm sure the dialogue trees are weird. I'm sure there are catchphrases and one-liners are generic, you know, Bethesda NPCs have terrible writing, so I don't expect their writing staff to improve on that front. This exploration isn't as endless and as cool as some were hoping. Oh. Like I said, it's flawed, but it's an entertaining Bethesda-style game with some charm, right. some great factions, beautiful music, deep side quests, weird stuff to discover, and some cool lore. It took a while, but for me, the good outweighed the bad. For you, I don't know. That's the point of this video. We're going to try and work on that. Let me explain why. Okay, every game that's ever been made is the good outweighs the bad. Even games that are 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, have annoying flaws that we just overlook with our subjective bias to give it a 9 or 10 out of 10. Every game is weighing the good over the bad. That's just explanation of reviews and how we perceive games. That's kind of redundant. I am break down all the stuff you can expect in the game. And just so you know, this video you see here is as spoiler-free as we can possibly do, you know, in the hundred hours You're not spoiling you could spend in the gameplay. Game. We tried to keep most of the footage on screen here to within the first few hours, just because like... Okay, you're keeping the screen Footage, the gameplay shots of the first few hours, that tells me that's as far as you got. Come on. Just just tell us the truth. You had a review copy, you put in like three, four, maybe five hours tops, so you're like, all right, I got what I need. Let's just do a full review and move on. Let's pump out a banger. So, <laughs> saying, oh, it's a spoiler free. We only do the first three or four hours. That's, that's as far as you got. Come on. We know how game reviewers are 
incredibly lazy. <laughs> Never get the game through full completion, at least not on new IPs. They don't have time for that. The time between these promotional reviewer copies to launch, they don't have enough time realistically to put in 100 hours. And it's just, what, what's the benefit of that when you can put in three, four, five hours and just make assumptions of how the rest of the game would play out based on your little trailer experience? There is a lot of good surprises, and I think stuff worth seeing yourself for the first time. Uh, and this footage is captured on both Xbox Series X and PC. Uh, you'll be able to tell by the frame rate. We'll talk about that all later. So, in the game, you start out, you create your character, you pick some defining backstory and traits, and get going. You're a miner on some remote mining planet, and you stumble upon something that quickly gets you whisked away, conscripted into a group called Constellation. They're like a group of space explorers, where in this world, the humans are all over the galaxy and all over planets and just kind of doing the things humans do in the future. Okay, so far this sounds pretty generic. Having humans be all across the universe, like they've conquered, they've already explored, they've terraformed and discovered, you know, warp drive and ways of crossing through galaxies, that's it's kind of like a generic default expectation of how humans would eventually spread. That's not really inspiring, but, you know, cool. I, it's Bethesda, and most of their storylines are kind of bland and generic, but let's go with it. Sure. Uh, Constellation is a small group still just focused on exploration and the vast mysteries of space. Okay. And there's a I good like that. main quest here with some good characters. Sure, they look a little awkward, but there's some good voice acting from some of the main companions, and dealing with their personality quirks and life differences is fun. Some of them, especially early on, like Sam Co, have some good charm to them. Spend some time with them. While characters may look generic on the surface, some of them might surprise you. But the actual main quest is I don't is think so. <laughs> <laughs> if the characters look generic on the surface, you're not getting that opinion just from how they look on the surface. You're getting that opinion from reading their lines of dialogue. This is Bethesda. It's not just the art style and the facial expression and emotes that give you the impression they're generic. It's beyond that. If you're using those terms, lifeless, soulless, generic, it's because of the dialogue. Come on, we're not going to get surprised. Maybe by bad, awkward writing, but elsewise, no. Come on, bro. Character is not voiced. You still seem to have some agency and choice in how things go down. And there's a. Alright, the silent protagonist is kind of done at this point. The silent protagonist does not give you a sense of agency. If there's no voice, if there's no personality, if there's no soul, then you really need witty sarcastic writing you need like phenomenal top tier writers if you're going to have a silent protagonist that is gripping and engaging and if it's bethesda no i don't have expectations there good mystery to unravel but again i won't spoil for me personally i actually levels that you can dump more points into to get more out of it so to unlock the next tier it's not about just dumping a point though you need to complete like little objectives or like a checkbox challenge for that's common. It's like you reach a certain milestone in your skill tree, then you have to overcome some challenge or milestone, you know, in order to progress forward. That, that's been around for like 20 years. That's not new. First. So, like, instead of Morrowind and Oblivion just jumping a ton of times to get better stamina, now you actually have, like, a checklist, like, say, shoot 20 bad guys to get better at pistols. Well, yeah, they've been doing that in other titles, other developers and publishers for 20 years. It's new for Bethesda, but it's not a new concept in general. It's good to implement, though. That's an improvement over the prior uh, entries into the Bethesda universe. Or carry 75% find choices. Then they also bring over the weapon mod crafting system from Fallout 4 with some tweaks, which I thought was a great system there and also very cool here. It makes for a pretty staggering amount of options and things to hunt for and craft and work towards. And you're getting weapons, spacesuits, out of space clothing, and. Okay, that's a good kind of customization, alchemy, modification system. And it's good carryover from Fallout 4. I respect that. They're not starting from scratch. Go with what works. I'll yogi that bear. Lots of resources for your jerk door to click on and load into. What is like a typical... Okay, that looks extremely generic. <laughs> Look at the textures on this rock surface. This looks awful. 
This looks like 720p. This, oh my god, what is this? This looks horrible. Sprinting and running out of stamina, jet boosting around and checking out abandoned factories or caves that... Okay, this does not look like a good use of anyone's time. <laughs> this is so generic and bland and void of any kind of environmental detail. This is, this is like PlayStation 1 level of devotion to environmental arts and environmental objects. There's like no sky. I don't know if he's on Mars or something. No, this, I'm going to scoop away from here. This is frighteningly, you know, uninspiring. Weird, but most of the time, to me, it felt a little dull, and I preferred focusing on like the town most of the time to and walking towards it and finding something totally weird. But yeah, yeah, so exploration reward too that's typical, Bethesda, good long running quests you'll get from like a shop or some guy. Okay, long running quests from a shop. This is this is like Bethesda for 20 years, so this is not new. Yeah, fetch quests, long dwindled, running, forever quests. Yeah, that, that's not new. To job postings. Actually... Oh god, job postings are so lazy. This, it's like centralizing all of the quests that you could have to a single point of contact, a job posting or a job board. It's like the laziest way to deal out quests. I don't like that system. Kind of do that to engines to speed up, maybe disperse a bit of power to weapons to have more power behind them, that looks pretty or cool. put it all towards your grab drive so that you can, like, light speed warp jump out of there quicker. The flying around isn't super complicated, again, like, you're this just looks kind pretty of a cool. big space arena separated by loading screens, which sucks, this looks but, nice. hey, that looks it's pretty. fun to blow up other ships. Yeah. The complete opposite of what I expect. I'm looking forward to the space exploration, that looks pretty cool. I like the gravity, the sense of gravity and weight that they were presenting. Quicker. The flying, the buggy nature of the game. No, Starfield is not immune from the typical Bethesda stuff you've seen in their other games. I mean, it feels like a Bethesda game you've seen before. Okay, those facial expressions and reactions are so void of life. <laughs> it's like typical Bethesda, not an improvement not going down trend from how they normally perform it. That's just how they are at this point. From gameplay to just like the feel, walk into frame and the camera will wig out. Yeah, that's, that's typical. But review copy, you're already able to break it. Sure, why not? As they clip through them and do... I haven't really had any uh, catastrophic issues other than getting stuck. feel a bit old in spots. You're especially at a lot of times a day. And Sometimes and when you're in 30 frames per second on console and uh, on some of the settings, you know, not the biggest recipes. Time and money on was the ship building. To me, okay, well, that's enough. It's just like any other Bethesda title. It's fine. Bethesda has been on a very slow descent, downtrend, and Starfield was like a a new opportunity for them to showcase to the audience, new and old, that they might have something interesting or fun or quirky, but it seems like more of the same. Which, uh, you know, it's not the worst thing to do. They're sticking to what they know, and maybe some mechanics are new. You know, like that space exploration, that was pretty cool. But other than that, the world exploration was, like, void of life. Some of those environments... Like, uh, world environments look ultra-generic and lacking of density of environmental objects. I don't know. The space stuff looks cool. The spaceship looks cool. Being able to mod your weapons, that's standard fare. Having, like, fetch quests and job boards is the laziest way to dish those types of things out, but... Eh, it's, it's probably gonna be, like, a 7 out of 10. That's what I'm guessing. Just more of the same. Alright, cheers, fam. Love you.